Hey good people, you might remember this wonderful little headless beast I did videos on. I kept it. And of course these guitars are made by Ert. E-A-R-T. We've done a couple of videos on a few of their different models now. And um, the guitar communities, particularly people into budget guitar communities, particular Lee, the Ert uh, Facebook group have been debating uh, something that has um, come up a lot recently in our discussions on prices and inflation. And in the recent video I did on raising prices, uh, a couple of videos actually, I made reference to Ert being a company that seems to have raised their price more than others and at a significantly higher percentage rate than others. Now this guitar, when I bought it, was around 300 but now it's over four, I think. Um, similarly, I've, I've had the uh, their basic Strat model, their upgrade strap model. I haven't had a Tele model yet, but um, I've noticed that those guitars have also suddenly, all in one shot, uh, gone up more than $100 in price range on Amazon and other uh, selling venues. To my calculations, their prices shot up about 40%, <clears throat> in some cases higher with some of their other models. And um, the reason I decided to do a video about it is because I, I am on the ERT um, discussion page on Facebook and there's been quite a lot of kickback in reaction to ERT's prices. Now from what I can gather from the conversations and from the person who represents the company on that site, um, there were two people that people uh, that buyers and collectors were getting familiar with that worked at the company uh, who have since left and started a guitar company that you might might have come across your radar called Latitude. Now Latitude uh, have just cropped up on Amazon with two models, two basic models. One is a Les Paul and the other is a 335 and it looks like um, they're sort of copying um, Ertz business model by uh, introducing things like stainless steel frets. Um, and it seems to be that they're very comparable to Wolf or AIO pricing. So we're talking, you know, $450 guitars, something like that. But back to Ert, um, someone made a comment about those two people leaving and the representative for Ert countered, and I think this was a little unprofessional, they didn't leave, they were fired or sacked. Um, which I don't know why you would relate that on a social media site. That should be an in-house thing. Um, however, there is some sort of uh, consternation going on with the company, whether it's to do with the prices and the, and the, and the, and the um, flack that they received for those that price increase across the board. I don't know. All I know that is if you go on to that particular page and others like it, a lot of customers are saying things like, who do you think you are, Fender, Gibson? Um, what makes you think that you, as an unknown, relatively unknown uh, brand, can all of a sudden start charging, um, you know, four or five, six hundred dollar prices for your guitars when they were half that, you know, as little as a month, two months ago? Uh, so there's a lot of that sentiment. Um, and a lot of people saying are saying, uh, I was willing to buy your guitars, uh, like this guitar, because they sat in that sweet pot, sweet spot around three, three fifty. You're getting good specs for that price range, um, but now that you're up in the plus five hundred, plus four hundred market, I'm not interested. You've lost my business. And I'm talking dozens and dozens of people um, putting that on there. 
I myself uh, have weighed in on the conversation and my comment to the ERT representative is we all understand uh, inflation. We all understand that prices will go up, particularly post-COVID. Uh, the ERT representative used the excuse of rising shipping costs and supply costs uh, for their recent price increases. Um, yes, international shipping has increased. Yes, the cost of lumber and timbers have increased, probably other parts too. However, no other guitar company has raised their prices so suddenly and at such a massive percentage increase. And all guitar companies are affected by the same crunches in terms of um, the cost of supplies and shipping. Um, so my point to them was, we understand that prices are going to go up across the board, but 40, 50% in one shot, taking a guitar that's 250, 275, and suddenly making it 425, 450, that, that, that's just, that's too much. Um, you know, raise your prices in, in manageable increments. Uh, their price upgrade was so quick, so savage, um, that it, there was an immediate reaction. Now, the, the, the person that's representing, or I forget his name, I don't think he gave his name actually, says he's new and that the market will slowly correct uh, and that they will, quote, find their place in the market. Because people are listing all kinds of examples. I can buy uh, an Ibanez, mid range Ibanez, for the prices you're asking. Um, I can buy, you know, a lower end Fender player guitar, perhaps, for the price you're asking, or, or, or uh, uh, you know, one of the nicer uh, vintage style Squires for the price you're asking. Um, why would anybody buy an up and coming little known brand when you're trying to compete with well established um, brands that have um, much more developed customer service dealership um, and can warranty their stuff uh, in, you know, a lot better than you can being that you're just uh, basically an Amazon and eBay seller um, and they're just getting hammered with uh, all these comments uh, to that effect and I think it's fair enough um, there are one or two defending saying well you're getting you know where else are you going to get stainless steel frets um, for this price? Uh, you're getting a good deal now. Their market's correcting, and the guitars are starting to represent their true value. And immediately, someone countered and said, "No, I can still get Harley Benton Fusion for considerably less, and those are stainless steel frets. So that's no excuse." And back and forth it goes. Now, one thing I did notice about two, three weeks ago there was a video put out by Phil McKnight on his channel. You're all aware of Phil. He's very well known, very well respected, and this is no slight on him at all. Uh, I think he provides a valuable service. And the video, I think, was entitled, This Guitar Is Why we're, We Realize We're Paying Too Much For Brand Names. And the guitar that he was looking at was a Ert, Telly, one of the nice flame top ones that you know you could get for 300 but now they're up to over four um, and he said in that video that he got the guitar because his viewers prompted him and kept talking about this new brand and so he got the guitar and reviewed it and of course he gave it a good review uh, and also you know said you know to steal what you're getting for this price, uh, um, you know, we, we can we can safely say we're paying too much for some of the brand name stuff compared to this guitar. Now I think Ert saw that video and maybe others like it, and it went to their head, and they very confidently just raised their prices. Um, you know, I'm not certain of that. I'm just guessing. Uh, the one thing that Ert doesn't understand, this is a point I made on those boards, is Phil McKnight, 
and this is no shade on him, is not the typical end user. He wouldn't buy an art to gig with or to play. That guy is an industry insider. He has lots of contacts. Uh, he used to own his own store. He could get any guitar he wanted. Um, and it's probable, I don't know for sure, that he received that guitar gratis for a review. Um, what would be more reliable to Ert is if they listened to smaller, um, non-insider, just regular folks reviewing the guitar, i.e. their target customers, the people that have been buying their guitars and have allowed them to grow very quickly as a company. Um, you know, you, you're thinking I'm putting myself forward. Well, I am not an industry insider to the point that Phil McKnight is, but I do have some context. So even people further down the chain than me, um, their reviews are what's important. And, or it should be listening to them. And most of them are saying, look, um, you, you have taken the pricing out of the budget realms and you're now charging mid-range mid prices for a budget company that is not developed and doesn't have the infrastructure for me to pay that kind of money and then listing all kinds of brands and models that they can buy for the same amount. Uh, so it's an interesting phenomenon. I'm, I'm interested to see if Ert will correct um, or at least temper the price hike uh, in uh, coming weeks uh, as the representative promised that they will find their place and that the market will correct. Uh, they're just dealing with, you know, inflated costs of shipping and materials, uh, probably post-COVID um, thing. And uh, one example that he gave uh, was a new um, series of guitars. I think it comes in three colors. It looks like a super strap. I think it has um, two singles and a humbucker on it. Uh, maybe some sort of tremolo, uh, sort of a, a, um, uh, a metallic style finish, stainless steel frets, and I think coil tap. And they said, look, uh, we're doing these on Amazon for $3.99. The price we were going to sell them at is $5.99. So the, he used that as an example of them you know, offering a concession. Whether it's a limited time deal or a certain run, I don't know. Uh, and immediately pe people said, well, that's cool, but it's not a $5.99 guitar. It is a $3.99 guitar. Um, and even that might be a little bit too high when you compare them to things like Harley Benton. Um, so I don't know if that's going to appease people, um, but, uh, you know, presenting it as some sort of concession um, to try and... Um, appease the people that are a little annoyed uh, with Ert for their drastic increase in peace and crisis. Um, you know, you'll just have to decide for yourself if, if that is a viable concession that they made or if it's just a piece of marketing scam. $5.99 is a lot of money for a uh, mail-order guitar from a small budget company. Um, however, I haven't seen the guitar, and the specs do sound really good, so uh, I would have to leave that judgment until maybe looking at the guitar and seeing what it compares to in terms of uh, other uh, models and what they're priced at. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, there's this huge debate uh, going on. I thought it was worthy of a video. I can't think of another company. There are other companies, I've noticed the prices going up, but not at that sort of percentage in increment. That's kind of drastic. Um, so I'm wondering what you think. Um, you know, if IYV, uh, Donner, Ertz, all these budget companies all of a sudden raise their prices one, $200, are you gonna support them anymore? Does that knock them out of your consideration uh, when you consider you can start buying you know things like Ibanez non-geo I mean the next step up from the geo models uh, at that at those prices or maybe even some ESP models as well Schecter certainly um, is that going to knock them out of your consideration or do you think we're getting a deal 
And now that the prices are correcting, we should, you know, either buy or not buy and not complain. I'd be interested to see what your views are on that. I thought this guitar was an interesting uh, and different offering for the price. Uh, however, at the new price, I probably wouldn't buy it, I'll be honest with you. Um, particularly as they've changed the design, I don't like the shape of the new ones as much as this one. But um, I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are on that. Let me know. All right, folks. See you on the next one.